the final whistle has just gone at Old Trafford where United have left it late but we got all three points against Newcastle United in a game that was at least before the game or before the match a lot of the focus was more off the pitch than it was what was going to happen on the pitch but we're going to have a look back at the game, see how we went on and see what happened in this mental 90 minutes of football. But, as always, if you do want to see more of these on the channel, drop a like on the video and hit that subscribe button if you are new. So first things first, the team lineups. Now, there are a whole raft of changes from midweek. Scott McTominay came into central midfield for Marouane Fellaini. Uh, Ashley Young came in for Antonio Valencia at right fullback. And Sanchez was benched in place of Anthony Martial. And the team on paper was, when I saw the team, I was a bit disappointed that Dallo hadn't, uh, that Dallo wasn't playing right fullback and Ashley Young was chosen ahead of him because, in my honest opinion, that should never happen. Uh, Dallo should be always ahead of Ashley Young. I know Dallo probably is still a little bit raw, but he offers us so much more than either Valencia or Ashley Young at right fullback. So I was a little bit wary about that. And also Scott McTominay in midfield. I just felt that the midfield three of Pogba, Matic and McTominay would be similar to the one earlier in midweek where we just lacked movement and energy and I would have preferred to have seen either Andreas Pereira or Fred in that central midfield area. But I was excited to see the front three of Rashford, Martial and Lukaku because Rashford's been doing all right. Uh, Martial has looked better in recent weeks and Lukaku really needs a goal. And he also needs runners off him as well. So I thought those two would provide those legs and those runs off the central striker. So I was cautiously optimistic going into the game. But we were 1-0 down within a matter of 10 minutes. Started really, really sloppily. And from a throw-in really, Matic kind of switched off. I Jose Perez got the ball in acres of space in the middle of the park. Fed um, Kennedy it was who Ashley Young was a good two yards more off him than he should have been. He should have been a lot more closer to Kennedy. And Kennedy rifled it in past De Gea to put the uh, Geordies 1-0 up. And then no sooner we conceded one, we conceded a second. Again, poor defending. This time I think it was from Pogba uh, in midfield. Ball again fed through to Muto, uh, Muto I think it is for uh, Newcastle, who again was being marked by Ashley Young, turned Young a couple of times and then smashed it down the middle, down the keeper's throat, and it went in the back of the net. Anyway, we were 2-0 down, and it was an awful first-half performance, probably the worst first-half performance from a United side I have ever seen in 25 years of watching United. It was that poor. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, there wasn't one player that I thought played well, and I thought it was an absolute disgrace that the way that those players had acted because regardless of who's your manager, regardless of whether you get on with him or not, surely at some stage there's got to be a bit of professional pride in your in your performance. You're playing for the club, not for the manager. Yeah, obviously the manager is going to have a lot of impact off the pitch with your career, but as soon as you step foot on that pitch, you are playing for the shirt. And it's about time some of these Manchester United players, and I'm more signalling more the senior players, if you, to be honest, because you can a little bit excuse the youngsters being a bit inexperienced, a bit, a bit, a bit hit and miss at times. But the senior players should be, especially when the chips are down like this, they should be the ones galvanising the side and dragging the team through and, and helping those younger players through, like Scott McTominay. Scott McTominay should not have to deal with the brunt of this frustration. Yeah, I don't think he's going to be good enough, ever good enough for the United side. But it's up to the likes of Matic, Pogba, Lukaku, Juan Mata, Ashley Young, who was his, who was playing on his side. It's up to those players to take the youngsters under the wing and kind of protect them a little bit and stop them letting, letting them get drilled into the firing line. I mean, when... Eric Bay went off after we conceded the second goal. McTominay dropped back into a centre-half partnership with Chris Smalling. And there was a couple of times where McTominay got really caught out. Chris Smalling, though, should have been covering that. And so should Nemanja Matic. Those two should have been covering up and helping Scott McTominay, who was completely 
not used to playing in that centre-back role. So he should have had a lot more help and a lot more protection from the senior players. And I think the senior players in that first half really let the side down and let the club down a little bit as well. But, like I said, we went in 2-0 at half-time. Mourinho raced down to the tunnel. So I don't know if it was a bit of a hairdryer treatment from the Alex Ferguson days, but we started the second half a lot more intense, a lot more focused, it looked like. We'd switched to a back three with Pogba and Matic in a back three. An absolute mental decision, but it paid off in the end. Uh, I suppose that's all that matters. You can only be judged on your results, I suppose. But Fellaini came on for McTominay at half-time, which I felt a little bit sorry for McTominay, even though I don't really rate him and I don't think he should be starting in this Manchester United side or any other Manchester United side, in my opinion. A squad player, yeah, starting? No, I don't think so. But Fellaini came on for him, so it was kind of obvious from the kickoff in the second half that we were just going to lump balls into that opposition area. And we did do that, but we also won the second ball, crucially. When the balls were getting headed out by that Newcastle back line, we were picking up the scraps. And obviously, also Sanchez came on about halfway through the second half. We created a couple of chances in between, but nothing glaringly obvious. Uh, Rashford had a half chance with a header that he probably should have done a little bit better. Um, Martial had another chance that he didn't really get hold of. Uh, Lukaku didn't really get much of a chance to uh, get any shots on target. So, Alexis Sanchez came on for Marcus Rashford about halfway through the second half. And immediately, as soon as Alexis Sanchez came on, there was a lot more freedom and playing with a bit of playing with a bit of verve and a bit of intensity in that second half. Now, I'm not saying that Marcus Rashford wasn't bringing that. I'm just saying that it coincided with Alexis Sanchez's arrival. And we looked a lot better. And we ended up pulling the first goal back from a uh, free kick that Martial won in on the edge of the area. Beautifully flighted in by Juan Mata, who'd also also come on as well. Really nice free kick. And we scored at a really good time. Still had 20 minutes left. And our sales were up at that point. Then we ended up getting the leveller, Martial, linking up beautifully with Pogba to rifle it in past De Bravka in the uh, Newcastle goal. And then right at the death, Ashley Young's cross, who he must have hit about 100 and only about 10% of them actually found a United player. Alexis Sanchez somehow guided the header past the Newcastle goalkeeper to give us a 3-2 lead and thankfully we held on. But as bad as we were in the, second, uh, the first half, we were much, much, much better in the second half and it almost looked, it almost looked like we'd... I don't know if, we were play, if that was due to instructions from Reno at half-time or basically the players had had enough and just thought, similar to the game against Manchester City, in a lot of ways, kind of, the enough's enough, we've got to pull ourselves out of this. And if they did do that, fair play to them. But you, you were never going to find out if, if that's the case or not. But I just felt the start of the game, I think everything that had gone on before it, you've all seen the rumours about Jose Mourinho potentially losing his job regardless of the result from today's game. And I think that nervous first half performance, that below par average that below par first half performance, I think all that has to do with those rumours. Because if you're going into the game not mentally prepared, you aren't gonna be at a hundred percent and none of the United players were at a hundred percent. There is a weird vibe about the club for the last couple of days. And I put that squarely at the feet of the owners because whether you want Mourinho in charge or not, the way these owners have gone about it and the way that Woodward has gone about this whole situation with Mourinho since the summer up until now has been an absolute disgrace. An absolute disgrace. Whether whoever's in charge, there is a right way of dealing with them. There's a right way of bringing people in. There's a right way of letting people go. And this is not an isolated, an isolated incident. We saw it under David Moyes where Woodward and the Glazers didn't have a clue how to let him go. They strung him along, they strung us along as well as United fans all up until the end of the season when the season was practically over and done with rather than pulling the trigger when it was glaringly obvious that things weren't working earlier on. And then we were flirting around with Louis Van Aal before he'd even gone or at least flirting around a couple of managers 
before Moyes left. And then, also with Van Aal, the way he was let, let go. Six months down the line after it should, he should have gone. They were stringing him along. They strung us along again. And only when, at the end of the season, when mathematically the Champions League wasn't possible, he was let go. And what, what happened? He was let go the day, the same day actually, as we won the FA Cup. How can you sack a manager on the very same day that he wins an FA Cup? And it's the same script again with Jose Mourinho. Ed Woodward does not have a bleeding clue. He should not be in charge of anything in this football club. Yeah, he's a fantastic commercial director and whatever. Well, if that's the case, piss off and go and keep doing that rather than sticking your nose into business that you have no goddamn right in even talking about because you haven't got a bleeding clue. No, I'm not naive. I know this this game and this win is probably not going to matter an ounce when it comes to whether Mourinho's going to stay in charge or not. But it was at least good to see them pull together in that second half. It was good to see the players pull together in that second half. And it was good to see Mourinho at least let the shackles off, whether that was down to him or the players just saying enough's enough doesn't really matter at this stage. I think Mourinho is a dead man walking. I think his days are numbered at Old Trafford. But the real enemy at Manchester United, and this is a message to all Manchester United fans that are watching this, the real enemy for Manchester United is not who's in the dugout. It's not who's in the in the in on the pitch. It's not who's down the uh, down the East Lanks Road. It's not who's at the Etihad Stadium. It's the bell ends that are sat in the director's box. Those pricks and I apologise for the bad language in this video, but those pricks have bled this club dry for far, far, far too long and use it as their own little cash cow to boost their failing businesses because they're piss poor businessmen over in America. So yet we need to start standing strong and fight against these arseholes because if we're not careful, these lot are going to rip the heart and soul out of our football club. So you need, we all need to get on the same page. Whether you're Mourinho in, Mourinho out, it doesn't really matter. We all should be Glazers out. We're at least got a win. It's our first win since the opening game of the season. I apologise for this rant which has gone on every which way than it probably should have done in far too long. But I had to get some things off my chest because it's ridiculous the way our club is being absolutely poisoned by an absolute bunch of pricks. But if you've enjoyed this and want to see more of these on the channel, and, um, and if you've liked this rant, let me know in the comment section. Also, let me know who you thought your man of the match was. I'd probably give it to Paul Pogba. First half, none of them deserved it at all. But I thought the second half, Pogba playing a bit deeper, kind of was con conducting things almost for United and driving the team on. So that was really good to see. Um, but yeah, let me know your man of the match in the comment section. And like I say, if you've enjoyed this, and want to see more rants of this nature, drop us a like on the video, hit that subscribe button, and I'll catch you guys next time.